Paul Jackson Pollock was born the youngest of five brothers on January 28, 1912, in Cody, Wyoming. His father, Leroy Pollock, was a farmer and a government land surveyor, and his mother, Stella Mae McClure, was a fierce woman with artistic ambitions. As a child, Jackson Pollock and his family moved around the West to Arizona and California. When he was eight, his abusive alcoholic father abandoned their family, and Pollock's older brother, Charles, became like a father to him. Charles was an artist as well, who was considered the best in the family at that, and became a great influence on Jackson Pollock's future ambitions. While living in Los Angeles, he enrolled in Manual Arts High School, where he discovered his passion for art. He was expelled twice before dropping out to pursue his creative aim. In 1930, Jackson Pollock moved to New York City to live with his brother Charles, and soon began studying at the Art Students League with representational regionalist painter Thomas Tart Benton. Benton encouraged Pollock with his art throughout the decade and even became like the father Jackson never had. In the 1930s, Pollock knew and admired the murals of Jose Clemente Orozco and Diego Rivera. From 1935 to 1942, he worked in the Works Progress Administration Federal Art Project that was created by Franklin D. Roosevelt during the Great Depression. From the late 30s and early 40s, Jackson Pollock struggled with alcoholism like his father had and began receiving Jungian psychotherapy with Jungian analysts like Dr. Joseph Henderson, who encouraged Pollock to make drawings and fueled his interest in symbolism and Native American art. In 1942, he met Lee Krasner, a Jewish contemporary artist and established painter in her own right. They were married in 1945 and lived in East Hampton. In 1943, Peggy Guggenheim gave him a contract that lasted through 1947, permitting him to devote all his time to painting. Prior to 1947, Pollock's work reflected the influence of Pablo Picasso and surrealism. During the early 1940s, he contributed paintings to several exhibitions of surrealist and abstract art. By the mid-1940s, Pollock was painting in a completely abstract manner, liberating himself from the vertical constraints of an easel to raw canvas spread along the floor as it made him feel closer to his paintings and closer to his art. In 1947, his drip style, marked by the use of sticks, trowels, or knives to drip and splatter paint, as well as pouring paint directly from the can, emerged. Reminiscent of the surrealist notions of the subconscious and automatic painting, Pollock's drips, also called action paintings, revolutionized the potential for contemporary art and furthered the development of abstract expressionism. Pollock's most famous paintings were made during this strip period, between 1947 and 1950. In 1949, Pollock's show at the Betty Parsons Gallery sold out, and he suddenly became the best-paid avant-garde painter in America. Pollock's 1950 show at the Parsons Gallery did not sell, however, though many of the paintings that were included are considered masterpieces today. It was during this time that Pollock began to consider symbolic titles misleading, and instead began using numbers and dates for each work he completed. Pollock's art also became darker in color. He abandoned the drip method and began painting in black and white, which proved to be unsuccessful. Depressed and haunted, Pollock would turn to alcohol. Though his work was widely known and exhibited internationally, the artist never traveled outside of the United States. By 1956, he had quit painting as his health and marriage began to suffer and fall apart. On August 11, 1956, Jackson Pollock died as he drove drunk and crashed into a tree in the East Hamptons. Many contemporary artists have retained Pollock's emphasis on the process of creation. They were influenced by his approach to process rather than the look of his work.